Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, How to Read a Rate Sheet. I'm Todd Jackson, Vice President of Bolton & Company in Pasadena and Chairman of IIAB Cal's Independent Insurance Producer Service Corporation. I want to thank IIAB Cal Associate Member CRC for once again sponsoring today's seminar. CRC administers the association's commercial earthquake, EPLI insurance programs. For more information on these and other IIAB Cal products, visit IIABCal.org. We are recording today's webinar and have muted your phones to eliminate background noises. You can still ask questions throughout the webinar through the toolbar of GoToMeetings. All of your questions will be addressed at the end. In addition, the handout materials for today's webinar can be found in the handout box of the toolbar. Today, we're excited to have with us an expert in workers' compensation insurance in California. Kevin Shine is an account specialist of the Data Quality Assurance Department at the California Workers' Compensation Insurance Rating Bureau, who will tell us how to navigate the experience rating form. Kevin, thanks for joining us. Please take it away. Hey, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, connect with our customers and appreciate your time this morning. Uh, we're going to take a few minutes and go through how to read a rate sheet. Um, my name is Kevin Shine, and I'm here with Rod Libby as well. He's our quality assurance director, and he'll jump in and, and add and, and probably help out with uh, some of the questions at the end. Um, and so today we're going to go over the four sections of the rate sheet. We're going to talk about some rate sheet annotations, footnotes, and what they mean. And we'll walk you through the process of requesting a rate sheet through our WCIRB Connect system. If you have questions throughout the, pan uh, throughout the presentation, you can submit them through the questions panel and go to webinar. We'll try and answer as many questions as we can at the end. If we don't get to your question, we'll shoot you an email and try and get you a response um, after the presentation. Uh, experience rating overview, quick overview. Experience rating is a state mandated merit rating system. Uh, it benchmarks an employer against their experience uh, against others in the same classification. Uh, an X mod of less than 100%, which we refer to as a credit mod, means an employer has better than average loss history. And an X mod over 100%, referred to as a debit mod, means an employer has uh, worse than average loss history. And the rate sheet is what you use to, uh, it displays how the experience modification was derived. It shows the payroll and the loss experience for every policy that is included in that XMOD calculation. And it includes all the approved rating values that were used to calculate that experience mod for that specific year. Here's a copy of the experience rating form. Uh, the rate sheet, it's released in a PDF format to the insurer of record or to any third-party administrator or MGA that's authorized to receive the information at the time the XMOD is published. Uh, the rate sheet is automatically released to any new insurer whose policy covers any portion of the effective period of the XMOD. And the WCRB can release this rate sheet information only to those who are authorized. That's the policyholder, the current insurer of record, the agent or broker of record, or a third party who's been specifically authorized by the policyholder for us to release that information. We had a couple survey questions about who uh, has seen a rate sheet before and who has uh, requested information through WCRB Connect to receive that rate sheet. Um, we might follow up with some poll information after the presentation. Um, we assume most of you have seen a rate sheet. We're not sure how many of you have actually walked through that process of requesting one, so we think that'll be really helpful and we'll go through that process today. So here's the four sections of the rate, for, rate sheet, the header, expected losses on the left, actual losses on the right, and the rating procedure. In the header section, you'll see in the top left-hand side, you'll see the name of the policyholder and their address. Uh, in the bottom left-hand section of the header, you'll see any bureau assigned classifications that we've identified as a result of a classification inspection we've performed. In the top right, you'll have your bureau file number. That's a reference number for where, uh, how to reference that particular policyholder the effective date of the XMOD and the issue date that it was published, the experience mod percentage, the insurer to whom this uh, issued the policy and the, their insurer group, and the policy number that this experience modification applies to. 
Uh, please note that sometimes the XMOD is issued uh, before the renewal policy has been issued. And so this policy number will sometimes be the expiring policy number. Uh, we don't actually, if it's the same insurer, we don't re-release another rate sheet to the, to the same insurer when the policy renews. So sometimes this policy number is going to reflect the policy number of the expiring policy. Then you have below that the issuing office, which is the issuing office that's reported on the policy, and the experience period for the mod, which determines which policies are included in this particular experience rating. Uh, it's a period of four years and nine months to one year and nine months prior to the rating effective date. The next section, we're going to go through expected losses. Um, and then so reviewing the columns from left to right, you have the classification and the exposure amount that was reported on the unit statistical report. The expected loss rate, which is a lookup value that is in our experience rating plan. Your expected losses, which is simply the payroll times the expected loss rate. The D ratio, again, that's a lookup value in our experience rating plan. And then expected losses times your D ratio is your expected primary losses. And lastly, your expected excess, which is simply your expected losses minus your expected primary gives you your expected excess. I also want to note here that the expected loss rate and the D ratio are for the current year's experience modification. So if this is a 2019 experience modification, the look of values you need are from the 2019 experience rating plan, even though the data in this example is shown here from the rate sheet to be from a 2016 policy. We're going to use the current lookup values. Next on the right hand side is the actual losses section. So again, from left to right, uh, actually we'll start in the top right, the primary threshold. This uh, value is a lookup value based on the total uh, expected losses for the experience rating form. And then from left to right, the columns, the claim number and the injury type and whether the claim is open or closed and the actual loss value that's reported. All that information comes directly from the unit statistical report. And then the actual primary losses are simply the actual losses minus the $250 that we discount each of the claims uh, from their actual losses. The bottom of the rate sheet shows the calculation. It's pretty simple. All of the numbers from the expected losses and the actual losses section carry down to the bottom of the rate sheet. The formula is very much simplified from prior years. It's very simple, actual primary plus the expected excess divided by the expected losses, and that gives you your XMOD percentage. You'll also notice in the bottom left-hand corner is your loss-free rating percentage. This is what the experience modification would have been if there were no losses uh, used to calculate this experience modification, your loss-free rating. Uh, so a lot of this information, we're going to show you a really cool tool that's on our website. It's, a, it's an interactive XMOD worksheet. Um, a lot of this information that we're talking about today can be found in the learning center of our website, and we're going to show you exactly how to get to this interactive rate sheet. So you click on the learning center up at the top, navigation. Under the experience rating section, you're going to click on experience modifications. On the left-hand menu, click on Experience Rating Form, and it's going to bring up this really cool interactive tool. Uh, each of the elements of the rate sheet have some drop-down information that it defines what that field is. You can also click on some of them, have links, for example, to all the lookup values, where those lookup values are coming from. You can move the slider over to compare some of the differences from the 2018 to the 2019 rate sheet. And then if you just want to see what the 2008 sheet rate sheet list used to look like, you can slide it to the right. So really cool interactive uh, XMOD worksheet. We encourage everyone to take a look. Next, we'll walk through some of the rate sheet annotations and footnotes. Uh, annotations are used to communicate special situations. Uh, for example, the rating includes self-insured data. If a policyholder was self-insured and then came out of self-insurance into the regular work comp market, and the current insurer wanted to submit that self-insured data to be used for experience rating, and it was approved, there would be a rate sheet annotation to indicate that that data was used in the XMOD. Also, estimated exposure, but with any reported claims, this is the scenario when a, a unit statistical report has been reported with the estimated audit indicator of a U to indicate that the employer was uncooperative with the final audit. 
in which case we may publish the experience modification without the exposure but with any losses. And there will be an annotation that will show that scenario. Uh, if the rating excludes insolvent insurer data, fortunately, uh, there haven't been many insurers that have gone insolvent in the past few years, so this annotation you won't see very much um, in, in current rate sheets, but some of the historical data will show that, that annotation. And then the rating is limited to 25 percentage points above the loss-free rating. Kind of in the last example, uh, we show what the loss-free rating is. Uh, if an insurer's rate sheet only has one loss, the rating will be limited to 25 percentage points above the loss free rating, and we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. The most important thing to note, uh, note uh, to remember about annotations is that these annotations are only reflected on the rate sheet. They are not on the XMOD history display in WCRB Connect and not in any of our data products. So if this is the kind of information you're looking for, you're going to have to be familiar with pulling up and accessing the actual rate sheet to see this information. Here are the footnotes for the examples that we just talked about, and uh, we'll show you what those look like, where they appear on the rate sheet. So here's an example of a limited experience modification. You'll see in the top right-hand corner to the right of the X mod, you have the annotation for the L, which indicates it's a limited experience mod. Again, in the bottom right, to the right of the percentage, again, you're going to see that same annotation in the bottom right. And then to the bottom left, you're going to see a footnote that explains that this experience mod is limited to 25 percentage points above the loss-free rating. And just above that footnote on the bottom left, you'll see the loss-free rating is 78 percent. The experience modification would have been 109 percent, but because it's limited, the X mod that's published is actually 103 percent. So there's a lot of really important information on this rate sheet that you're not going to see in any other place in WCI or B Connect. Footnotes are similarly, similarly used to communicate unique situations. So uh, if there's been a catastrophe claim uh, that limits the, uh, the use of those claims in the XMOD calculation, uh, if there is experience shared from another risk due to a change in ownership or combination of entities determination that our member services department makes, or if we reassign payroll from one classification to another classification, either because we published an inspection report or because of a new uh, establishment of a new classification or the elimination of another classification. Same thing with the annotations, the footnotes display at the bottom of the rate sheet in the rating procedure section. And again, just like the annotations, these are only available on the rate sheet. You won't see any of this information in the XMOD history in WCIRB Connect. Uh, so here's an example of our catastrophe claim footnote. You'll see here that in this example, there are 10 claims that were reported as catastrophe claims. We actually display them all on the experience mod rate sheet for transparency so that you can see each of those 10 claims. And below that, we'll show you that this has been a limited catastrophe claim and the, the values are limited to twice the maximum loss value of 175, in this case, 350,000. And same with the uh, primary actual losses are also limited at 14,000. So the footnote at the bottom will show you that this is a limited catastrophe and gives you a little bit more information to explain uh, why those, uh, how those catastrophes were used in the XMOD calculation. Here's another great example of a footnote for a classification reassignment. In this particular case, uh, case, you'll notice that class code 8870 is a new classification. This classification, you'll notice that in that section where 8870 appears, this represents a 2017 policy's data, the ex exposure information reported on a 2017 policy. Class code 8870 did not exist in 2017. So this footnote is going to explain to you that classification code 8868, which was reported on 2017 unit stat report, all of that exposure has been reassigned to class code 8870 for the purposes of calculating this experience modification. Again, information not available in WCRB Connect. You'd have to actually look at the rate sheet to see this information. We're going to walk you through the process of uh, requesting an experience rating form. Uh, XMOD worksheets are always available in WCRB Connect to the current insurer of record. They don't need to attach any authorization. As long as we have their current policy, they'll be able to get that information directly from WCRB Connect. 
We've also partnered with DocuSign for agents or brokers to request the information, uh, agents or brokers that are not the current agent or broker. We have a, a special process that's really modern uh, that will request authorization from the policyholder, and we'll show you what that looks like. So for a non-agent or broker, a non-current agent or broker to request the rate sheet, their first step is just to navigate to the policyholder information that they want in WCRB Connect and go down to the XMOD history section and select the XMOD that they want to request. Second, they click the button at the top to authorize the rate sheets or inspection report. They'll get to this screen where they'll select the second option, which is request at the WCRB to obtain a letter of authorization from the policyholder. And this is where DocuSign takes over. So here's how the process works. The agent or broker navigates to WCRB Connect. They select the rate sheet that they want to, uh, they, they want to receive. WCRB Connect works with DocuSign to email the authorization request to the policyholder. Hopefully the policyholder signs it and grants authorization to the agent or broker. They will receive a copy of the letter of authorization. DocuSign will send that response back to our WCRB Connect system. And then WCRB Connect will notify the agent or broker that the request has been approved and that the Experience Mod worksheet is now available in the Connect system. Similarly, if the policyholder rejects the authorization, Connect will also send a notification to the agent or broker to notify them that the request has been rejected. For a current agent or broker, the process is a little more simple. The DocuSign process isn't necessary. So after they've requested the rate sheet that they want, the agent or broker, current agent or broker only needs to attach the declaration of the policy that shows that they are the current agent or broker. And they can attach that document and then they will have automatic access to receive that rate sheet. They don't have to go through the DocuSign process. We will point out here that we do audit this process. So please be sure that the document that you're attaching shows that you are the agent or broker of record. Um, don't attach some other kind of signed document or uh, you know, a note from your mom or dad that gives you authorization to receive the rate sheet. Um, you must have an actual declaration page that shows you that you are the agent or broker. Um, and we do audit that process. If we find that in, uh, someone has violated that process, you risk losing your access to WCIRB Connect. So that's the process for requesting a rate sheet. We also want to do a plug for our WCRB Comp Essential system. Um, we have four courses, uh, three courses available and one coming soon, one for experience rating, class basics, ownership and experience rating, and are coming soon about the workers' comp system in the WCRB. If you haven't tried one of these courses yet, we strongly recommend it. They're really cool and interactive. The graphics are great. It's really an easy way to, to consume some of this complicated information that, uh, about the WCRB and experience rating and ownership. Um, so, and we wanted to also make a plug for our certification. Coming soon, we have our WCRB Comp Essential Certified Expert Certification. So for those customers that complete all four available courses, they will receive a certification. Um, uh, IAB Cal members receive a 10% discount off our Comp Essentials, and each Comp Essentials course is worth five CE credits. So this is a great way to keep your, keep your credits um, current. Um, and so if anyone has any questions, you know, we'll take a couple minutes now. If you have any questions, again, you can use the GoToWebinar software to ask any questions and we'll take a look and um, Rod and it can help me answer any questions that come up. So um, please, you know, we encourage questions. Again, if we don't get to your question right away, we'll make sure we follow up afterwards, but please um, don't be shy with your questions. Hi, hi, this is Rod. We had a question about unit statistical reports So, um, and kind of what a unit statistical report is. So a unit statistical report is a reporting by the insurer of the payroll and loss information that they were able to uh, determine based upon their physical audit of the um, policy period, as well as then the valuation of claims as of 18 months after the policy inception date um, for the first report level and then an annual evaluation thereafter. So this is the data that we at the Workers' Compensation Rating Bureau receive and is used as part of our rate making functions as well as experience rating. So we're using the actual data from insurers in the calculation of the experience modifications. We're not 
um, divining that information from other external sources. It's coming from the insurer of record. So a question came up, how is the primary threshold determined? So the primary threshold comes from the total expected losses. So once you go through the process of calculating total expected losses, this is again, you're gonna apply the expected loss rate for the specific classification or each of the classifications that were used in the calculation. So you're gonna have a three year experience period. You're gonna total all of the payroll you can multiply it by the expected loss rate, which is a per $100 um, rate. You're going to come up with the expected loss for that class code. You're going to total all that up, and you're going to come up with the total expected losses. Once you come up with the total expected losses, then you go to a table in the experience rating plan, which will then tell you what the primary threshold is based upon the size of the employer. So the larger the employer is, the larger the primary threshold it goes down as low as $4,500 and up to $75,000. So again, the primary threshold is how you're going to determine um, the maximum value of the cl actual claims that are going to be utilized in the calculation of the experience modification. So let's see what else we have here. So we have a, a question about, so what's the best way? So if, so um, we talked about how you read the rate sheet. So you have gone through, you've diligently requested the rate sheet. You've taken a look at it and you say, oh, son of a gun, it looks like something's wrong here. Either the payroll wasn't reported right or I don't think the claims are reported right. So how do you go about fixing that? Well, as I talked a little bit about before, the actual data that is used in the calculation comes from the insurer. So what I would suggest, assuming that you're not the insurer, um, you would work with the insurer and provide them with the information that would show what the correct exposure would be um, or um, ask them more information about how claims were valued and how they were reported to the rating bureau. Uh, if you are the insurer and you're seeing that the information that is reflected in the calculation is not reflective of what you reported to the WCRB, again, you can contact our um, call center and uh, describe, again, what it is, what the issue is, you know, what the value should be in the calculation. And again, we're more than happy to take a look at um, any errors that may be have occurred and correct that. As it relates to insurers that may have misreported data, once the new unit statistical report is submitted to us, we go through the process of calculating a revised experience modification. So once we get revised data, we will proceed to um, recalculate the experience modification. You wouldn't necessarily have to follow up with us to, um, to uh, trigger that uh, reevaluation. So we got a question that asks about um, when does the insurer have to provide data to the WCIRB? Um, within the Uniform Statistical Reporting Plan, which are the Insurance Commissioner's regulations, it directs that insurers are to value claims the first time at 18 months after policy inception date, and then they're supposed to report that unit statistical data, so the payroll and loss data, 20 months after the policy inception date. Um, if the insurer is truant in providing that data to us, they would be subject to fine. And so then the longer it goes, the, the higher the fines are. That doesn't, again, that doesn't stop them from submitting the data. We always want the data and it's gonna be important to the policyholder that the data be submitted so that they can get the experience modification. But we do try to incentivize the timely reporting of data so that we can issue experience modifications prior to their effective date. For the most part, for most instances, we start generating experience modifications about four months prior to their effective date. But um, 
that's dependent upon, again, receiving the data and making sure that that data has passed all the various audits and edits. Okay, it looks like for the most part, I think we've taken care of the questions. So let's turn the presentation back over to Todd. Thank you, Rod and Kevin, for spending uh, time with us today. What a wealth of information that you shared in a uh, short period of time. So uh, I know we had a lot of attendees. So I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to um, educate us all on the uh, WCIRB uh, worksheet. Also want to thank again uh, CRC for sponsoring today's session. If you want more information on upcoming webinars or our webinars on demand, visit iiabcal.org. Finally, don't forget to register for InsurePath 2019, November the 6th through the 8th at the Hilton Los Angeles Universal City. We have great professional development program with CE opportunities planned. For more information, visit insurepath.org. That concludes the webinar. Thank you for participating.